when you need to calculate the correct cycle length for an instrument you are trading based on the number of days between any top and bottom, the expected result differs from reality, often very significantly. This is because the length of our calendar days is different from our universal solar clock. This difference, my friend, makes it difficult to predict future tops and bottoms based on simple addition, as we often try to do. Hi trader, this is Mario from Forex Other Way. In today's video, I will share with you how you can use the universal clock to make your calculations more accurate or more precise or based on the daily standard and poor chart example. So let's start the rock and roll. Contrary to popular belief, a calendar day that has 24 hours is different from a sidereal day, which is slightly shorter of only 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds. Well, 3 minutes, 56 seconds a day is not that much. But, you know, in the long run, if you try to recalculate it, say in 10 years, the difference becomes extremely significant. During one year alone, the difference between the calendar year and the sidereal year is almost 24 days, or exactly 23.94 days. Here we've got on Wikipedia what is sidereal time. Don't worry about it, how to recalculate it. Oh, here we go. A sidereal day is approximately 86,164 seconds, which differs, you know, if we recalculate uh, 24 hours, it's 86,400 uh, 86, seconds. So it's nearly quite uh, a little bit of time. So the difference, as we've got over here, 93.93 for, for whatever days. The exact position of the sun on each day can be found in tables called ephemeris and this is one of them over here well the number call in columns in these tables look like black magic wd gunn used them in his forecasting saying that he was able to pinpoint to predict future potential tops and bottoms many years ahead and you don't need to know how to calculate this ephemeris they are generally available online and whenever you want it. The one thing you need from this table is just one value. I will show you in a moment which value, how to do it. So I've got in front of me already prepared standard and poor chart with a starting point as of March 23rd over here. And just let me show you where is this funny March. Here we go. That's our starting point over here with the closing price marked. Uh, you must have remembered the day because the market made a rock bottom at that day. And from uh, 23rd March on, 23rd March 2020, the market started an incredible bull rally, which continues to these days. And probably it's not going to finish so quickly we still need the last strong wave of euphoria which we hadn't had yet on a, on the share market in the united states so at the date as w as wd gun used to say the time and the price square so they are equal to so they were in balance so we can use this date as the starting point as a reference point for recasting eventual future harmonic reversal points in the future. And now in this way we can use ephemerates table to check out what was the sidereal value of that day. So first let me, let me explain it. Uh, what was the date? It's over here I think. Oh here we go. That's the date. We got 2020 geocentric ephemeris for the sun we are interested only in this value in hours minutes and seconds it repeats all over the year 
and on March 23rd, that was the value 1203.47. So there was 12 hours, 3 minutes and 47 as a time angle. I've got it over here. I mark in my table 1203.47. So that is the this angular value. And as you see, the next day, the value grows with about four minutes. The next one on March 24 over here is 12.07.43. So it's three hours, 50, three minutes, 57 so higher the next day value than this day value. In this way, you can very precisely, even on intraday, you can use uh, this uh, sidereal time to find your tops and bottoms. I'll show you here very simply how you can do it. Obviously, in my calculation, which I've got over here, I got that date. It is 23rd of March 2020. That was the closing price of, uh, of the market. And this is the sidereal value, uh, sidereal time on that date. Obviously, you can recalculate the price into the minutes, hour and second. There is a way to do it. Let me just show you a simple example how I did it. This price is 2237. So in as a general rule, if we got any value, let's say 165.88 and we want to recalculate it into the into the time and that way in sidereal time this value we can do it in the following way so 165 we consider it is as a number of minutes so as an hour we do it what we've got to the left of the decimal point we divide by 60. so what it would say we can do it even in modular function and if we divide by 60, we'll get two point, uh, whatever. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. 165.88. If we divide it by 60, we'll get this value. Oh, what, what did I do? No, it should be divided. Sorry. 165.88 divided by 60. It makes 2.76, uh, per 76 decimal points after that. So anyway, if we consider this as a number of minutes, we got two hours over here. And what remains with that, it will remain 45.88. So we got two hours, 45 minutes and 88 hundreds of the minute. Yes. Yeah? So as a number of seconds, so we got the minutes 40 for two hours, 45 minutes and 88 tenths of the second we have to, in this way, we have to multiply it by 60 and we'll get the number of seconds. No, it's a simple calculation. You don't need to know how to do that. But if you, if you go after that, let's 0.88 multiplied by 60, it will give us 52 seconds. So this value is two hours. Uh, it's written as two hours, 0.45 minutes and 52 seconds 52.8 we can even write 53 we can round it up and that's the value uh, of this number so that's the way so this is the sidereal value in hours minutes and seconds of this number that's the way how these values for the sun are calculated with special formulas so let's leave it like that and in this way, what my calculator made over here, so we got this uh, value as a starting point, we got the price. And let me just show you how the calculation was made. And where is this? Show the columns. Here we go. So we got uh, one eighth of the price, an octave of the price is 279.675, whatever. And uh, this over here, this is the price targets based on E3 plus D3. So we, it's just recalculated as simple uh, support resistance lines in the future marked 
on the chart here, where this chart is over here. So these values show potential uh, support resistance values as eighths of the price. But the time now, the time was calculated in such a way that there was calculated that was uh, 0.618 of an octave. Here we got the octave it is 0.618. And here we've got the value, the actual value of, of this uh, number calculated the way I've shown you. So it's two hours, 52 minutes. And yeah, because this, this 172 minutes, we can consider it's two hours, 52 minutes and 50 seconds. So that's the value. That's the step we can add up to this value, to the starting point value. And we add it up. Our first point has shown us 14 hours, 14 minutes, 56, 14 hours, 56 minutes, 37 seconds, and is being read from the ephemery table. Ephemery table shows 14, 56, 37. Let me just show you where are 14. Here we go. So it's shown on the May 5th, 14, 53, 18 is here. We got 14, sorry, 14, 56, 37. 14, 56, 37. So it's, it happened on May 5th, late in the afternoon. And in this way was found that date. And what is interesting, I just want to show you that recently, based with the step adding uh, 2 hours, 52 minutes and 50 seconds as a length of the cycle, potential length of the cycle based on the price and the way it is calculated. We just got some hours here after obviously after 24 hours, we have to subtract it. So I got it 24 here, subtracted from 26. This is 227.57, which shows uh, next one is uh, rock bottom on 28th of October. Let me just show you 227.57 on ephemeris, 227.57, it's November 4th over here. That what it shows, and it says twenty eight ten. I don't know why. Let's check it to twenty seven fifty seven on ephemeris to twenty seven fifty seven. So October twenty eight. Here we go. Sorry, to twenty seven fifty seven to twenty seven twelve seconds. So fifty seven was at that date. October twenty eight. Very interesting date, October 28. I mark it as a rock bottom, October 28 on Standard and Poor, October 28. Just let me show you where is that. Here we go. This is a rock bottom of the market. Just let me show you how it looks. It's shown this bottom over here and so on and so on. Uh, what is being calculated further? I just observed over here we go. So adding 252 to the previous one, we get this one to adding 250 to this one, we get A13, so on. Recently, we had 1944.57. 1944.57 is already, this degree is in 2021. So just let me change it to 2021, this table. I just don't want to waste your time. When we go here, look over here, we got another, we got geocentric ephemeris for the sun 2021, and we are searching for 19. Here we go, 44 minutes and 57 seconds. 1944, my friend, was recently 1944. Here we go. July 18, it says, 1944, July 18th, 
and we've got it marked over here as July uh, with 2021. Just let me show you. Here we go. We got July 19 because the previous one was July 16. So here on the table, it shows us July 18th, which was on Sunday that that value has been reached. Usually the market reversal occurs if it, if it shows Sunday occurs on Monday, the closest uh, trading day. And that was on the date of 19th, Monday, 19th of July, 2021 was a recent rock bottom. As you see over here. Another bottom was 3rd June 2021. As you see, I marked it over here. 1652.07. was 1652.07. Here we go. It was June 4th, marked as June 3rd. Why I marked? Probably there was Sunday. So we got June 3rd, June 4th, somewhere here. Anyway, that's the point. So in this way, what I found another one, the next one which shown after July 19 is 22 hours, 37 minutes, 47 seconds of sidereal solo time. So it shows the date. 2237, my friend, falls on 2237. Here we go, August 31st. And here we got the value. And probably, probably, it looks like is another harmonic potential reversal point of standard and poor based on the law from March 23rd, 2020. What is even more interesting that that date falls, we don't know what's gonna happen. It looks as a harmonic point. What happened? I made another calculation based on the square of nine and this point and this price recalculated and just represented that way. And what is here on 18th on 7 as well? The market shown that point is just a calculation based on the square of 9, which I sometimes teach on my private tutorial sessions. Uh, that for the details, just write me an email you'll find under this video. And look, same, same story here. It shows first of September, which is just one day of 31st of August, which we've got calculated based on the on the sidereal time, based on this bottom and the sidereal time of that bottom. Here it shows another harmonic point on 31st of August, which is probably Tuesday. Uh, it is Tuesday, 31st, so Tuesday, Wednesday. It's a cluster point where the market might do any reversal, potential reversal, which is harmonic. So this is harmonic date of the time related to price from this rock bottom of 2020. It might seem complicated, but it's not complicated at all. It's very easy to handle that method. And I encourage you to to try to operate with sidereal time of the sun because it's the only, the only universal clock which works, works precisely. So that's why probably WD Gun was able to, to produce uh, such, a, such amazing results of his forecasts of these highs and lows. You remember he had an accuracy of roughly uh, ninety percent of his predictions for two thousand nine and ten was right, so I encourage you to use the sidereal time. Very useful, very nice tool. I hope you you found some value in this video. I encourage you to see my other videos. Take care of yourself. I see you next time.
Bye-bye.